welcome to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to get right into the weekly for the sign of Leo. This is going to be for February 8th to the 14th. And Leo, of course, uh, don't forget I am giving away the Love Oracle card deck for Valentine's Day. It's just a little while away, about 10 days now away. And uh, I will be announcing the winner on Valentine's Day. And all you have to do to be in the running for that is to be uh, subscribed to my channel and to just leave me a comment letting me know that you're interested. All right, Leo? All right, guys, let's get right into it. Of course, it doesn't matter where in the world you are. International, it really doesn't matter. Okay, uh, if you're interested in the drawing and if you are able to receive mail at your location, then you're in, okay? Because I can ship it internationally. It's not a problem. All right, so let's get right into it, Leo, and pull out your love oracle cards uh, to see what messages the oracle has for you. Now, I love this deck of cards because a lot of the messages can apply to someone who's single as well as someone who's involved, and can just in general apply to all kinds of relationships in your life friendships, family, relationships as well. It doesn't only just have to be a love connection or a romantic connection. All right, first out we have paradise, happiness, and joy. Wow, Leo, playfulness. Mmm, we like that. The axe. Well, at the same time as we have paradise, we have the axe. So somebody is... Getting separated, breaking up, stopping a pattern, perhaps, in the palm tree. Interesting. So, this can feel, palm tree, of course, is, is serenity, calm, growth, um, just everything you associate with a palm tree. They're very flexible, they're very enduring, they're very peaceful, right? So, it's a very specific kind of energy. Let's get right into your animal spirits, Leo. Now, your animal spirits can represent uh, energies that are coming available to you or stages in your life that you may be going into. People or personality traits of, of people that you might be dealing with. So let's just see what your animal spirits for this week are, my lovely, lovely Leo. Show me. Boxed? No. All right. Straight out we have the peacock. I love this animal spirit. Came out, I think it was for Taurus earlier. And we have the nightingale. More air energy. This beautiful nightingale. Beautiful. Associated with singers, of course. And the sea serpent. Second chakra associated with uh, that area in the pelvic bowl where our kundalini energy comes from, our passion. Okay, so let's get right into the animal spirits. It's nice uh, blue energy as well here. Okay, the peacock, very, very rare, very special animal spirit. People who resonate with the peacock would never admit to it or say it because it is part of the peacock's nature to be absolutely so unself-absorbed, uh, unself-centered, and focused outward to the rest of the world. The peacock is beautiful. Someone who resonates with this energy is someone who's absolutely gorgeous. On the outside, um, they, they are mesmerizing. They really pull you in, but it isn't even sort of classic beauty. It's just something about them. They're just very beautiful, but what really sends this sort of attraction for this, for this type of special individual into orbit is the fact that they themselves are completely humble. They have no ego whatsoever. A peacock really just sees beauty everywhere around it and doesn't see levels or degrees or values. Everything is beautiful. And so the peacocks can see the beauty in even things that we would on the surface or traditionally call unattractive or ugly or unpleasant to be around or unpleasant to witness. The peacock can see beauty in everything, right? And I'm not talking about like beauty in like violence. I'm talking about just beauty in things, beauty in people and all kinds of people, all walks of life, all shapes and sizes. Very, very lovely uh, animal spirit to be around. Now the peacock oftentimes will have a lot of people who fall in love with it, 
right? This is the type of person who has, like, you ever meet somebody and they've got, like, three, four different people who are absolutely head over heels in love with them. And they're still not, you know, they still don't have any sense of ego. They still don't have that kind of high and mighty, oh, well, I'm, you know what I mean? They just don't. Um, beautiful animal spirit to be around. Now, the nightingale is more air energy. And, of course, the nightingale is known worldwide for its beautiful singing voice. And on the surface, the nightingale is a very unremarkable bird, just a small brown plumed bird, just very simple, right? But it's when it opens its mouth that the nightingale really shows its magic. And so the spirit of the nightingale comes in whenever we have something really important to express, when we have um, something in our hearts that we want to express vocally, and specifically vocally, right? Uh, the night and the spirit of the nightingale is there whenever uh, there are someone who is a um, has a high talent for singing, uh, a talent for oration, speaking, maybe even um, motivational speaking. Right, um, just hearing their voice and hearing what they have to say is just so inspiring and uplifting. Very nice when the spirit of the nightingale is around. Now the sea serpent has the alchemical symbol for ether at the top of the card. With animal spirits, we have five elementals, air, water, earth, fire, and spirit, or otherwise known as ether. The sea serpent, uh, the ether or spirit, um, animal spirits are usually uh, mystical objects or mythical animals. And here we have the sea serpent eating its tail, which is a sign for infinity. Um, this is the second chakra, and really it's significant of sort of the infinite amount of potential that we all have. The infinite, infinite amount of potential that we have for expressing ourselves creatively, right? And so the sea serpent really, when the spirit of the sea serpent is around, uh, it means that we are beginning to sort of tap into that potential, maybe perhaps starting to realize that potential, and really um, sort of go, you know, go forward with it, right? Um, express ourselves, right? It is the second chakra, and the second chakra is associated also with passion. It is uh, the chakra that's located in the pelvic bowl, which is associated with our reproductive organs, right? So, you know, that sexual desire and passion is all linked to kundalini energy which is also all linked to our creative desire to express ourselves you have to remember that the highest form of creation for us is to make a new life right and what do we how do we do that we do that through sex we do that through expressing ourselves sexually and passionately and making a connection and that is all associated with the second chakra so you know, that, that whole sort of energy there is all about the potential to uh, go out into the world creatively. All right, guys, let's get your three card spreads out. These spreads are intended to be separate from each other, so you may or may not resonate with just one of them or a portion of one. And let's get right into it. Leo, we have Page of Wands. Page of Cups and the Moon. So let's move this up just a tad. All right. So Page of Wands, Page of Cups, and the Moon. Really unsure, right? Ending the week with unsurety and a test. But you start the week off with a Page of Wands. And Page of Wands is all about overcoming fear. Um, fear with regard to our creative impulses. The fear that we may have of following our heart and following our passion, right? Having a purpose or an ideal for our life, right? Uh, when we have a certain ideal for our life or when we follow a certain passion in our life, initially it can be really uh, daunting uh, because whatever it is that we are passionate about, maybe people around us don't understand. You may be ridiculed. You may be f frightened of or fearful of uh, rejection or failure, right? Nevertheless, pages are always associated with overcoming fear in that suit and the practical side of overcoming fear in that suit, the earthy side, since pages are always earth. So page of wands, we're talking about the earthy aspect of sort of getting out there and following your heart. And so being very, very practical in sort of um, the pursuit of your passion. Perfect energy to have with the sea serpent. Certainly if you are beginning to become more creative, some of you may be going down a creative path. 
In any case, this is the energy you come into the week with and somebody's coming towards you with that same kind of fresh new energy because this is a fresh new energy about you, right? It's a fresh feeling of wanting to follow this path. Someone else around you is feeling that energy and they want to give you a cup of love. They want to kind of give you a token of their appreciation. Page of Cups is overcoming fear in relationships and, and, and engaging with others. Just as Page of Wands is overcoming the fear of following your heart, Page of Cups is where we learn to overcome things like jealousy or insecurity, uh, self-esteem issues, you know, thinking that someone might not like you or may not think you're attractive or all of the things that we associate with relationships and the fears that are associated with relationships page of cups is all about overcoming that and so if someone's overcoming their apprehension with you perhaps a little bit of trepidation but they're coming towards you and they want to just give you a little bit of a a sign that they're into you they like you you know they have their eye on you by the end of the week though you round your week off with moon energy and it feels like a real test or a real feeling of like I don't know what's coming next and it could very well be that this page of cups energy that's coming into you it could be like right, it feels to me like it's out of nowhere, right? It's coming out of nowhere. It's just at a time when you're about to sort of embark in a new way of um, following your heart, right? Now all of a sudden somebody is coming into you and that feels all very new and fresh also. I mean, pages always bring with them fresh energy. And so right now this week, for some of you Leos, it may feel a little bit sort of up in the air. It may even feel a little bit like a test. This page of cups may feel like a little bit of test when it comes to relationships. Some of you Leos may have, you know, this page of wands is uh, an energy that might be coming out of uh, some of you Leos who are now out of a relationship. You might be newly single or you may have sort of gotten out of a relationship in this last, you know, several months or year. And again, this page of wands energy of following your heart might be a whole new thing for you. But now that this person is coming towards you and letting you know they like you, I think for you, it feels almost like a test again. Like, well, hang on a second. I'm just about ready. You know, I'm independent. I'm ready to follow my own dreams and goals. Um, I'm done dealing with, you know, the relationship I came out of was, you know, had maybe had some issues with it, right? Clearly, it's not still there. The relationship is over. And I think it feels to you like a real test that somebody is coming into you with love right at a moment when you're about to sort of like just follow your own way, you know, follow your own path and follow a path that doesn't necessarily make room for anybody else, right? It can also feel a little bit like a test because this person may be coming into you exactly the same way the last person was or they may have similarities to the last person that you were involved in or a person you were involved in. Uh, where the relationship didn't work out. And again, it feels kind of like perhaps a testing phase for you. Like, how do you handle it this time? Like, how do I handle this personality this time? You know, I know what happened last time, but what do I do now? And the moon really talks about a period when, you know, you don't have all the information and you kind of have to just overcome your fear, you know, and get on with it, right? Um, because eventually you come out to the sun anyway. The sun is the next card in the tarot sequence. So you come out into sunshine. You come out into the light of day. You just have to be brave enough to kind of get through this period and really sort of, you know, remember, you know, your experiences and remember the wisdom that you've so far accumulated. Judgment. Eight of Wands. Five of Wands. Well, judgment is always around in my readings. And some of you are certainly coming in this week with a feeling of forgiveness a feeling of just wanting to sort of let go of some hypercriticism you've had. It might be a feeling of wanting to sort of move on from a particular situation uh, in reconciliation, right? Um, you just feel for yourself, you feel like you've come to an understanding about something uh, where you realize, you know, it's not all just about the way I see things. It's not all about just my sort of focus or my experience, right? Uh, I'm being hyper, I've been hypercritical or I've been overjudgmental because I've only been looking at things through my eyes. But life is starting to show you, Leo, that, you know, things are really different from different points of view and different perspectives. And everybody's perspective on the same event is very different. 
And so th there's no room for, cr you know, hypercriticism or judgmentality. There's only room for forgiveness and understanding that, you know, uh, forgiveness also begins at home, you know, and if even if you've made decisions or acted in such a way that you weren't so necessarily proud of or looking back on it, you don't really support now, you know, um, you forgive yourself. You realize that you're only human and we all make mistakes or we all realize that we could have done something differently. So this is the feeling you're coming into this week with, a real feeling of sort of letting go, I want to say, almost acts energy in a sense of really cutting and letting go of maybe some negative energy that you've been holding on to about yourself or about a particular dynamic. Just in time for you to sort of forgive yourself and let yourself off the hook and possibly someone else, you have an eight of wands. So somebody's coming in, there's a lot of chaotic energy coming in this week. It almost feels like the same scenario that you've been thinking about is happening all over again. And it feels like almost like a second round, you know, a second chance to handle the same type of situation, but differently. With this judgment card, you're looking back into the past to a certain degree realizing you could have handled something a little bit differently and it feels to me like it's happening all over again for you this week this chaotic amount of um information or energy is coming into you remember eight of wands is all about setting boundaries you know this could be sometimes when everybody in your mom wants to tell you what to do or wants to be in your business you know what i mean and it just feels like hang on a second there's too much coming in i need to set some boundaries here Right and establish what I'm going to pay attention to and what I'm going to dismiss. By the end of the week, though, there's a real competition. It's almost as if everybody's come into you, and by the end of the week, they're all arguing. Right. So this could very well be a family situation, Leo. Um, this could very much be a family situation or a situation sort of in your social group. Feels to me like a family situation almost, you know, just when you were ready to go back to the family and do some healing and some forgiving, it's like they start all their shit up again. All this energy comes up again and everybody wants a piece of you, Leo, because it seems to me like perhaps you're the one that everybody's always focusing on. And by the end of the week, everybody's arguing again. But remind, like, like I said before, this is an opportunity for you to be in the same scenario you were before and with that hindsight 2020 because judgment is kind of you know hindsight is 2020 card uh how will you handle it this time around last one full page of swords and the magician so again so you've had all three pages represented in your week this week leo so that's quite interesting it's definitely a week of newness and beginnings youthfulness the fool comes in to remind us that you have just gotten over a ma you have just gone through a major stage in your life, Leo, where you've really made a quantum leap up. You've really learned something. You've accumulated a huge amount of wisdom in a particular area, and you're now about to start a whole new chapter in your life in an area where you have yet something to learn. Right? This is the thing with the fool. The fool moves from you know from stage to stage, but only once. It's learned what it needed to from one stage, and now it's on to another stage, ready to learn. So it's a constant, you know, becoming the master, becoming the student, becoming the master, becoming the student. You're basically always the student in life, right? In any case, you're starting a new chapter in your life, and I'm going to say this could very well be something to do with your career or your business, or it could be something to do with something that you want to do, like you may be an inventor or a creator of some kind. And you're about to embark on a path down that road because you come into this week with this energy and you're met with Page of Swords. Page of Swords is all about staying confident and staying positive, not having negative doubt. Remember, as I said earlier, pages are always about overcoming fear. Now here with the Swords, we have the Page of Swords overcoming the fear of following um, our ideas. The uh, overcoming sort of negative mental um, states, right? Negative mental thinking, negative mental states, self, uh, negative self-image, right? Swords is all about our ego, the mind, and communication. And so with Page of Swords, we're talking about fighting against uh, sort of 
doubts that come into our minds, right? Unnecessary doubts that we have that will seek to stop us from going after what we want, right? Going after our objective. Or certainly uh, having overcoming the fear of standing up to other people who may try to sort of instill negativity in you, you know, make you doubt yourself. Just as we saw with the Page of Wands and the Page of Cups, Page of Swords is all about overcoming doubt and self-negativity. And certainly with this new path, this is what's happening for you this week. So events, events are happening for you, some of you Leos this week, that are really going to... Uh, put you in a position where you are going to have that energy of sort of standing up for yourself, standing up for your ideas, being clear, having clarity, and not letting anybody get you to think that you're confused or that you don't know what you're doing, right? By the end of the week, you resonate with the magician. And the magician is extremely confident. He knows what he wants. He knows his talents. He knows his skills. And he is definitely on top of his game. So it's beautiful that you kind of... You know, you go from starting this new path, really being excited and being very, very um, motivated and strong to really coming into your own. This is definitely going to be a new path, like I said, perhaps at work or to follow some kind of idea that you have. If you're an inventor, this is all about you follow, you know, bringing your invention to uh, to manifestation to the world. If you if it's something to do with your career. It may be that you're changing career paths to go more in line where your skill set lays. Whatever the case is, is that by the end of the week, you are so like uh, on top of things. You you know, you make it look like magic. And that's what the magician is all about. The magician is the highest card in the deck, the tarot deck, for uh, talent and skill and the ability uh, to do something that other people don't necessarily have the skill or talent, more importantly, to do. All right, guys, Leo, this is your reading February 8th to the 14th, your weekly. Don't forget to let me know if you're interested in the Love Oracle deck. You just have to leave me a comment and, of course, be subscribed to my channel to be in the running for that. Um, and if you'd like to get a private reading, please don't forget to follow that link at the top of your screen. If you are an international booker, just email me. Sometimes my booking system has issues with certain international telephone numbers. All you have to do is email me and I can manually schedule a reading. Um, follow me on Instagram, all of that good stuff. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. But for right now, my lovely, lovely Leos, have a wonderful week. And I'll see you next week for the weekly. Bye-bye now.